here, BNI Maine, Kelly Mank, your Executive Director. And today we have Niels Mank, Executive Director also of BNI Maine. Niels, you're here to talk to us a little bit about feature presentations today? Feature presentations. Excellent. And so, you wanted to talk about how to, how to use all three senses. Explain to me how that's possible. So this one is entirely personal to me because I've been visiting a lot of chapters lately. I've been hearing some great 10 minute presenters, some feature presenters, and I've just been looking at it and wondering, how can I take this in? How can I implement it in mine? And what could make them better? And how are the people in the Zoom room reacting to the feature presenter? And I started realizing that there's many different ways to do it, but there's three senses to think about that you have to take into account when you do a feature presentation on Zoom. And the first one is the easiest one because we're all doing it. It's the auditory because I've never seen, I've yet to visit a chapter yet where a person has done a 10 minute pre presentation and they haven't been talking. So the auditory one is covered. We got that one down pat. But the other two senses are the visual. And for somebody like me, if there's no visual along with it, you've lost me. And I've got, I've got multiple screens. I got things looking at. So my email is calling to me. Facebook is calling to me. My work is calling to me. My kids are calling to me. Everything else is calling to me during these Zoom times because we're working from home. We're working from our home offices. So many things are going on that are calling us away from the screen that we have to be engaging on the screen to keep people's attention. And by using all three senses, you can do that. So I have some suggestions for people for the visual piece. If you're not a PowerPoint person, I get it. I was not a PowerPoint person. There's many ways you can do it. You don't have to be a high tech person to make the visuals happen. But if you do know PowerPoint, make sure you're getting a slide to the person that's putting it into the feature into your PowerPoint. Use slides, use Keynote, use Google Slides, anything you can do, put some pictures in, something funny, something that triggers reactions in people. Let people watch something while you're talking to them. Don't just lecture to them. You know, people, when they stand up and say they're going to do lecture style, my eyes roll back, I get ready for it, and I really have to take my mouse and make my mouse go away because it wants to stray to my email or it wants to start searching Facebook or doing something else because it doesn't, it, it doesn't engage me. I can't, I can't keep my concentration on it. So use visuals, pull some pictures in, you know, make it fun for people to see. The other one, the last one, and this is really important to so many members, is the tactile. There's people that have to touch something. And when we're live, people love when you pass around literature or brochures, or if you pass around, if you're somebody that does food and you pass food around, you can still get that through Zoom. You just have to be a little bit more creative. And I tell people, you you know, they're like, what, what can I do? I'm going to mail them things ahead of time. No, you're not going to mail them your products, okay? But people have things sitting in front of them that we all have. Kelly, do you have a pen? Yes, I do. I have a pen. I can get you to click a pen on the other end during the presentation and I can engage you to click that pen. I have business cards. Most people have their business card on their desk or a business card to someone. Have them pull out their card and look at some piece of it. You know, engage them somehow with something they have. A lot of people have their water bottles, you know? Take a drink because in the middle of your 10 minute, your mouth is getting dry, you wanna drink, encourage everybody else Take your water bottle and have a drink right now. Get them to use their hands. The best one I've seen yet is telling someone, okay, this is the interactive portion. Find the, the weirdest thing that's in your office space right now. What is the weirdest thing? I have a baby Groot. I have a baby Groot planter in my desk and I put a baby Groot up. Kelly, do you have something weird on your desk? Sanitizer, okay? What is that thing that's sitting on your desk that you can show people? If you can get them to use their hands, you're gonna be so much better off because they're not gonna be using their hands on the mouse or on the cell phone. Those are where you want their hands to stay away from. You wanna stay away from distractions. You want them engaged on you. So if you can get them to be touching the things that you're looking for them to touch on their desk, and if you can engage them with visuals while doing a great presentation, you know, through your auditory senses, great three pieces right there. That's how you're going to get an amazing feature presentation. You're going to educate them and they're going to be able to go out and find you referrals. So feature presentations, it doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be hard and high tech. You can use some very low tech techniques to engage the people on the other end. That's my suggestion for this week. All right. Thank you so much, Niels, for doing that. Guys, 
He's great. We all know it. Really have some fun with those feature presentations. Take them to the next level. Make sure you're using them to the best, best, best of your ability because really that's your opportunity to train your sales force. Thank you so much for watching today and we hope you have a fantastic week. Happy networking.